I'm Jasmine Theodora and so far I've talked a lot about the essence of femininity, about nurturing your feminine essence as a woman, which of course is a lot more important than outward adornment, but there's also nothing inherently wrong with wanting to also look feminine, to accentuate your womanly appearance. And when we as women accentuate our womanly appearance, we accentuate our natural beauty in a very well integrated cohesive way we're working with what we already have at our disposal and just emphasizing it accenting it and in that way we work in tandem with our divinely created nature instead of fighting it wanting to look nice is not a bad thing i love dolling myself up for my husband and looking nice at church etc and doing it in a way that subtly and elegantly accentuates what makes me a woman so accentuating your womanly appearance is really about simply emphasizing the physical differences between men and women. Of course, men and women have similarities physically, clearly, but our differences are so significant that you can always tell if a person is a man or woman within a second of looking at them, right? Sexual dimorphism within humanity is very much alive and well, which is wonderful, and the differences between men and women are wonderful, glorious things just like how harmony is more pleasing than everyone singing the same melody line in a song. Accentuating our womanliness in a modest and elegant manner also glorifies God and his design. So I hope that you all enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe for more content like this and let's get started. Number one, dress for your body type. I think it's a given that if you want to accentuate your womanly appearance, then dressing for your body type is very helpful. But not every woman's feminine body looks the same, obviously. And just because your feminine physique looks innately different from another woman's feminine physique does not make you any less of a feminine being. But because we have different body types, dressing for your specific body type, knowing how to work with it so you can accentuate your feminine physique in the most flattering, cohesive way will be a game changer. And that is why I'm not going to just say, you know, wear skirts or cinch in your waist, wear heels. Those kinds of blanket statements are not going to be a game changer for you. And I promised you a game changer. I mean, it's in the title. <laughs> So I know we've all heard of the five main body types for women, the hourglass, the pear, the rectangle, the inverted triangle, and the apple, but there is also a much better body analysis guide called the Kibbe body analysis guide or the Kibbe body type test. The idea of the Kibbe image ID system is that you honor your natural lines, your natural curves, and dress in harmony with it. Your Kibbe body type does not change as you age, as you gain or lose weight, as you go through pregnancy, etc. Your body type is a steady anchor to hold on to as your body naturally changes through life, which is partly why I like it so much. Now, there are 10 different types within the Kibi system. The dramatic, the soft dramatic, the flamboyant natural, the soft natural, the dramatic classic, the soft classic, the flamboyant gamine, the soft gamine, theatrical romantic, and romantic. Your individual body type is based on your individual yin and yang balance, with dramatics being the most yang and romantics being the most yin. Dramatics are more sharp and angular, natural types have more width, classics have a good balance of yin and yang features, gamines are petite and have high contrasts, and romantics are more soft, fleshly, fleshy, and rounded. Personally, I'll say it's not that easy to figure out what type you are, although it is definitely worth it. It took me a while to figure it out because I have both yin and yang features. I am taller, so I have a longer vertical line. I am naturally more slim. My hands and feet are pretty narrow, and I don't have a large bust, but I do have a pretty prominent backside and rounded hips, and I have a more ovular face with moderate cheekbones, a soft rounded jaw, and full lips. So I have a combination of both yin and yang, and based on the Kiwi system, I have and based on the Kibi quizzes I've taken, I am considered a soft classic. So I'm going to quickly go over every type and explain how to dress for your specific type. If you'd like to take a quiz to help determine which Kibi type you are, I'll leave a good one in the description box. And if you already know which type you are and would like to skip to the next chapter, then please feel free to do so. 
So dramatics, who are on the end of the yang spectrum, appear very long and narrow. They're tall, they have a straighter figure, and have sharp angular lines. In order for dramatics to dress in a manner that flatters their shape, they should aim to wear more structured matte fabrics and clothing that has long, clean, vertical lines. Long and straight pants, skirts, dresses, and coats will look great, keeping the silhouette simple, straight, and clear with little to no color blocking to highlight the long vertical line, monochromatic, clean, minimal detailing also definitely works best with dramatics. With naturals, the predominant feature is their width, so they have more broadness in the shoulders, upper back, and ribcage, but they also have long lines with blunt, slightly rounded edges. What you should wear if you're natural will depend on whether you're flamboyant natural or a soft natural. Flamboyant naturals are more yang dominant. They have wide and angular shoulders, angular hips, long limbs, a wider rib cage, a dominant bone structure, and have a long vertical line. Flamboyant naturals look best in clothes that honor their width, so wearing unconstructed, flowy, draped, loose, and slightly oversized clothing looks great. Wearing off-the-shoulder pieces also looks great to honor their width, and to accommodate for their long vertical line, they should also wear long, unbroken straight lines. Soft naturals also have width like flamboyant naturals, but they have a shorter to moderate vertical line, and they have a yin undercurrent, so they have more curvature. Again, soft naturals want to wear more loose, flowy, unconstructed clothing, but they also look their best with waist emphasis, with soft fabrics and some soft detailing like some prints, floral detailing, and some soft texture like ruffles or lace. Classics. Classics are evenly balanced. They're not very noticeably sharp or soft. They're somewhere in the middle and are pretty symmetrical. Because they're in the middle, it's easier to dress as a classic as long as what you wear does not upset the overall yin and yang balance. So dramatic classics look best with symmetrical elements and with simple, clean, unbroken silhouettes with some added structure and sharpness. Keeping things just generally more clean and understated is recommended as well. If you are a soft classic like I am, then you're still balanced like a dramatic classic, but you'll have slightly more curvature. If you're a soft classic, the same principle applies. Every Everything even in balance and with moderation, but with some more yin elements. There should be minimal detailing, clean lines, symmetry, but also waist emphasis, soft fabrics, and some delicate detailing like ruffles, florals, and lace. Gamines. Gamines are pretty complicated. The gamine is defined by being yin in size and yang in shape. So gamines have a combination of both yin and yang opposites. They're petite, they have short and narrow limbs, they have square or tapered shoulders, and a very short vertical line. Flamboyant gamines tend to have angularity in the chest and hips with some softness, while soft gamines have rounder chests and hips. Flamboyant gamines look best in high contrast clothing, meaning there's lots of detailing, a lot of short broken lines, and fitted structured silhouettes. Soft gamines also look good in high contrast clothing with short broken lines, but should also have some more waist emphasis, uh, soft fabrics, soft edges, and some feminine detailing like lace, ruffles, etc. And lastly, romantics. Romantics are yin dominant. They are very curvaceous, fleshy, and have a short vertical line. Romantics look best with a lot of waist emphasis, with lightweight, soft fabrics, soft edges, delicate detailing like florals, ruffles, lace, and a lot of glamour like Marilyn Monroe. Now, this is mostly an overview of the Kiwi body type guide, so if you'd like a more in-depth video about how to dress for your body type in the most flattering manner, then please let me know and I'll get to work on that. That'll be a bit more of an extensive video, but it's always nice to know exactly what kind of clothing brings out your natural beauty the best. Now, at the end of the day though, these are just recommendations for your type. You don't have to dress exactly to your kibby body type to look good, but incorporating some of these tips may make you love what you wear even more. Number two, dress for your coloring. I know people say that more pastel colors are feminine because they're softer, and there may be some merit to this, but pastel colors are not always the most flattering depending on your individual coloring. So if you pop in your clear, 
vibrant, bold colors, please don't think you have to wear pastel colors to look more feminine. As an overview, if you have a clear complexion where there's a lot of contrast between your skin tone and hair color, you probably look better in clear, bold colors. If you have a soft complexion, meaning there's not a lot of contrast between your skin and hair color, you most likely look better in muted pastel colors. Also, if you have a warm undertone, you should wear clothing that has warm undertones. If you have a cool undertone, you should also wear clothing that has a cool undertone. And if you're neutral, lucky you, you can wear clothing with either undertone. When you wear clothing that is cohesive with your complexion and undertone, it brings out your best features. You actually look healthier and more fresh and youthful when you wear clothing that complements your coloring. If you are warm toned and wear cool toned clothing, it kind of makes you look sick. It brings out your dark circles, brings out the discoloration of your skin, and it just throws off your overall beauty. But if you're warm toned and wear warm toned clothing, it brings out your natural beauty. You look more fresh, you look more youthful and less tired. You also tend to feel better and more energized in clothes that complement your undertone funnily enough, even if you were not aware of your coloring. So if you want to dress cohesively with your womanly appearance, then dressing not only for your body type, but also for your coloring will be a game changer. Number three, V-shaped necklaces. Wearing jewelry is also a given if you want to accentuate your womanly appearance, but a tip that I figured out is that as women, we have a more V-shaped collarbone as compared to men, and wearing a V-shaped necklace as a pair to a choker that sort of looks restricting and cuts you off will emphasize the natural, graceful, and feminine V-shape of your collarbone. The neckline is also a very feminine spot, so it's very flattering to not only show off your neckline, but also cohesively accentuate it with a delicate V-shaped necklace. And I personally don't think showing your neckline off is immodest as long as you're not showing any cleavage. Also, adding a glowy moisturizer or sunscreen to your decolletage area to subtly highlight it will look great as well. Number four, feminine makeup tips. Now, these days, I don't wear a lot of makeup because my husband prefers me not to wear makeup, but I still do sometimes, especially when I'm filming because the camera really washes me out. And when I do, I try to use it in a way that accentuates the softness of my face. So one thing I stopped doing was filling in my eyebrows at all. I keep them now very soft and wispy. I also apply my blush typically on the apples of my cheeks instead of the cheekbones because applying it to your cheekbones tends to add more definition to your face. So I keep the blush on the apples of my cheeks so I can look more naturally flushed and youthful instead of utilizing the blush to add dimension. I also use a very natural wispy mascara so my eyelashes keep their delicate look instead of them looking spidery and wiry. And then I always use a soft lip color like a sheer pink or berry, I never use lip liner because it sort of creates also more definition as well. Whereas if you have your natural lip line and use a very natural color, your lips look more delicate and soft. And finally, I like to use a subtle highlighter on my cupid's bow, the inner corners of my eyes, the tip of my nose, the tops of my cheeks, and my eyebrow bone to add a nice soft sheen to my face. Number five, flowy pieces of clothing. Now this is more preferential, but now that I'm pregnant, I basically only wear more flowy, less restrictive pieces of clothing because they're a lot more comfortable, but they also are very feminine because femininity is free flowing and fluid and flexible. So wearing less structured, more flowy, airy, fluid fabrics like airy cotton or viscous or silky textures that really move with your body can accentuate your womanly appearance in a very subtle and elegant manner. But if your body type looks better with more structured clothing, like if you're a dramatic body type, then you should absolutely go for that if you'd like to. But if you're dramatic and want to wear something flowy because it's comfortable and you enjoy how it looks, then please don't let the Kibi body system keep you from doing that. Again, the Kibi system is more about about recommendations than anything else. You can still look feminine and well put together without following the Kibi system to a T. Number six, dressing modestly. 
I do believe both men and women should dress modestly because modesty is an outworking of humility and humility is a fundamental virtue. But when a woman is humble, it acts as an amplifier for her feminine essence. Just like when a man is humble, it acts as an amplifier for his masculine essence. We're able to connect to our femininity better when we're humble and men are able to connect to their masculinity better when they're humble because we're able to understand and fulfill our respective roles better. So dressing modestly will accentuate your womanly appearance because it overall amplifies your feminine essence. Covering our cherished assets also creates intrigue. It invokes mystery and who does not like that? And reserving your sexuality for your husband is a wonderful virtuous thing. And yes, he should absolutely reserve his sexuality for you as well. And lastly, skirts and dresses. Why are skirts and dresses considered feminine? Now, of course, wearing skirts and dresses is considered culturally feminine in the West. This is a given, but why? Why is it so jarring to see a man in a skirt or dress, but not jarring to see a woman in very utilitarian trousers? The reason for this is actually pretty simple. Trousers are for the utility of horse riding, and up until recently, men were always expected to be able to ride a horse. Horses were the means of fast travel, whether for war, trading, or ranching, spheres men dominate in. This is why some cultures without historical cavalry have male skirts or kilts, Scots and Polynesians, for example. So wearing skirts became a more feminine thing because women typically did not engage in war or trading, so they did not have to wear trousers. So the point of this is that no, you don't have to wear a skirt or a dress to look womanly, although because of the history of skirts in the West, they are considered a very feminine and womanly item. So wearing them does make you have an innately more womanly look because no men really wear skirts or dresses in the West except for perhaps religious purposes. And in that case, they really look more like robes or tunics. Skirts and dresses also tend to be more flowy and fluid than pants. So that's also partly why they're regarded as more feminine. Personally, I choose to almost exclusively wear skirts and dresses because it's sort of my personal little revolt against the androgenization of men and women. In our modern culture, women are encouraged to emulate men in every capacity, including appearance. And feminism, ironically, encourages masculinity in both dress and behavior. And while the appearance of something is never identical with the essence of something, how we choose to cultivate our appearance is an outworking of our intentions at large. And I intend to encapsulate godly femininity. So I choose to dress in a feminine manner, even if that manner is simply culturally feminine in some ways. It is an outworking of my beliefs and I also feel more feminine when I'm wearing a skirt or dress as opposed to pants. So I tend to conduct myself in a more feminine manner when I'm wearing a dress or skirt as well. So ultimately, it is your prerogative to wear pants, and if that's what makes you feel comfortable, then please go for it. Wearing pants does not take away from your femininity because genuine femininity is ultimately about your essence. But if you want to look more womanly, wearing a skirt or dress can absolutely add to your feminine appearance, especially if you live in the Western Hemisphere because they're almost exclusively a female worn clothing item. And you very well may feel more feminine and conduct yourself more femininely without even thinking about it. Well, that is the end of this video. I really hope that you all enjoyed it. Next up is feminine charisma, the art of feminine charisma. I am so excited about that. So please like and subscribe to see that video or if you're already subscribed, then wow, thank you. I see you. I know who's always commenting and watching my videos and I really appreciate you it is so special that these same people are intentionally coming back to my videos. It means a lot. So thank you for watching really from the bottom of my heart. I am Jasmine Theodora and goodbye. God bless you.